Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Devotions with the Deacon. Uh, on this Maundy Thursday, I thought it would be nice to um, bring a little more C.S. Lewis to you. One of the things that strikes me every single year when we come to this point in our Christian year is how um, I'm reminded over and over again of the miracle of what was done that gave us Jesus fully man and fully God. Fully man is so important as a part of this piece because that's how we, I think, can understand that some of the things that we have to endure are part of the creation as God created it with great love because God is not in control of everything. We're not puppets. And so um, he showed us all of that through Jesus and through Jesus's life and particularly on this day and during this weekend. So I'm sitting outside on my porch because uh, Athena isn't here right this minute. Otherwise she would be barking away with us. Um, and I'm going to, uh, there's a, a piece that Lewis wrote that's part of his um, book, um, Letters to Malcolm. This is out of chapter eight. And um, the, the little section is called Anxiety, but that's where it comes from. And so I'm gonna read that to you and then we can discuss it for a minute or two. So sit back and relax. Some people feel guilty about their anxieties and regard them as a defect of faith. I don't agree at all. They are afflictions, not sins. Like all afflictions, they are, if we can so take them, our share in the passion of Christ. For the beginning of the passion, the first move, so to speak, is in Gethsemane. In Gethsemane, a very strange and significant thing seems to have happened. It is clear from many of his sayings that our Lord has long foreseen his death. He knew what conduct is his in a world such as we have made of this must inevitably lead to. But it is clear that this knowledge must, must somehow have been withdrawn from him before he prayed in Gethsemane. He could not, with whatever reservation about the Father's will, have prayed that the cup might pass and simultaneously know that it would not. That is both a logical and a psychological impossibility. You see what this involves? Lest any trial incident to humanity should be lacking, the torments of hope, of suspense, anxiety, were at the last moment loosed upon him, the supposed possibility that after all, he might, he might, he just conceivably might be spared the supreme horror. There was a precedent. Isaac had been spared. He too at the last moment. He also against all apparent probability. It was not quite impossible. And doubtless he had seen other men crucified, a sight very unlike most of our religious pictures and images. But for this last and erroneous hope against hope and the consequent tumult of the soul the sweat of blood, perhaps he would not have been very man. To live in a fully predictable world is not to be a man. At the end, I know we are told that an angel appeared comforting him, but neither comforting in 16th century English nor in Greek means consoling. Strengthening is more like the word. May not the strengthening have consisted in the renewed certainty, cold comfort this, 
that the thing must be endured and therefore could be. We all try to accept with some sort of submission our afflictions when they actually arrive. But the prayer at Gethsemane shows that the preceding anxiety is equally God's will and equally part of our human destiny. The perfect man experienced it, and the servant is not greater than the master. We are Christians, not Stoics. And I, I think um, I, I just wanted to have us imagine a little bit this morning that we were headed for Gethsemane this evening and how we might feel. I know um, from having been ill myself that you have to sort of say, well, this could do do me in. And I, and I think we all always have to say that we, hi y'all. And we also all, always have to say that we are um, <clears throat> hoping against hope, we are always expecting that maybe nothing will happen. Maybe we will bypass this one scary thing. And um, so um, one of these days we won't, will we? And we'll face, and, and even during life, even before the end of our lives, we have to endure some terrible things sometimes. And it is a great comfort to me in some weird way to know that even though, or to feel at least, to believe, that even though I'd rather not go through these things for sure, um, that I live in a world that I help in the tiniest way create, including the way I choose to feel about the things that happen to me, if nothing else, and the way I happen to feel about them and how I feel about God as our creator as a result. And knowing that Jesus, the son, had his own doubts, his own fears, certainly his own human pain, the same as we all have, and emotional pain, and unknown about the future, send that sense of unknown, to know that, that even he suffered that, I know that I certainly can, and that and that it cannot, it can be endured because we do have a loving God who's made a beautiful world for us. And we're the ones that change things, respond to things, act in that world in a certain way that can cause it to be one way or another, either for us or for other people. Um, and I'm grateful for that permission, even though I realize that it causes pain sometimes. So that's kind of food for thought here for this Monday Thursday, and as we go into the into Good Friday and the Passion of our Lord. And I um, hope it will bring a little extra insight for you and a little more meaning for the day, off the day, for you as well. So in the meantime, and from here, uh, until next week, I'll see you in person during Easter, and then I'll see you next week on Devotions with the Deacon. Thanks. Bye. Uh-oh, you're evaluating my work. I am. Are you subscribed? I will with a red button. And give us a thumbs up. I'm a fan. Of course.